and every one of those teams had the rap that he couldn't win a championship because he couldn't defend. Well, he got to the finals a couple of times. Got to the finals in 76, and then there's a three by Quinton Richardson as he continues to close in on Dan Marley's record for three-point hits in a season. Iverson fouled on the perimeter. That foul is on Joe Johnson. First foul on him. Well, we're just uh, getting underway here in Phoenix. And the 76ers in possession. Loose ball rebound to Steve Nash. And a pass to Marion out of bounds to Philadelphia. Let's take a look at our Bud Light on the floor. The Sixers with Iverson, the rookie Iguodala, Corver, Weber, and Dallin Bear. The Suns with Nash, Johnson, Richardson, Marion, and Stephen Hunter in the starting lineup tonight in place of the injured Amari Stoudemire. What the Phoenix Suns count on is the pace of the game, wearing their opponent down. The fact that they are a deep shooting team, and that kind of sucks their opponents into thinking that all their perimeter shots are going to be good shots. Joe Johnson gets his first hit. And gets a little help from the glass on that rim shot. You but know, it puts the Suns on top. They've scored the last six. Joe Johnson came out about an hour ago. This is the bad thing about an hour ago. He didn't miss a shot. For 20 minutes, he didn't miss a shot. And now you're telling me he's getting a little help from the glass. He's at home. Amari Stoudemire out of the lineup again tonight. And uh, there you see it among the league leaders in points per game. Fifth in the league. Has an ankle probably a problem. And Sean Marion, who has had great numbers this year himself among the league leaders in rebounds and steals. Second on the team in scoring. Sons. They've got, with Nash and those two guys, Marion and Stoudemire, they've got three MVP candidates. They do have three legitimate three M MVP candidates as Nash goes down on at the Palaya. Richardson. And that's his favorite spot on the angle, and he spooned it. He's got one tonight. But there's only going to be one of them that's going to win the MVP, and that's going to be Nash. Nash's season is a lot like Allen Iverson's season in 2000 when he drove the Sixers to the NBA uh, Finals. Marion! Four points for Marion, and the Suns have scored the last eight. The best... The best thing about playing about playing for Mike D'Antoni, he believes that they can win this thing playing flat out at pace. Pushing, 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 and making the other team work. Hunter ran down Iverson and got the block. And as Nash got inside, a reach-in foul call. Chris Weber is an important guy for them, but as he found out in Sacramento, uh, you know, you can't mishandle, you can't do much against the triple team, and it will turn into something bad for you. And uh, there is John Marion flying. That was Stephen Hunter making the block off the glass, and the Suns have to make a change. D'Alembert with two fouls is out. Rodney Rogers, or the Sixers, Rodney Rogers has come in for Philadelphia. Nash trying to go over the top, somehow got it to Hunter. Richardson. And the rebound picked off by Iguodala. Iverson. That doesn't to drop it to the teammate and goes out of bounds. That doesn't happen very often for the Suns where they have Steve Nash actually guarding Allen Iverson. They sick Joe Johnson on Iverson and they try to create a cross match so Steve Nash can get out of the backcourt without having to deal with the speed of Allen Iverson chasing him down. And of course the Suns will run on anything. Iguodala went strong to the hoop and it's followed in by Rodgers. 
Rodney Rogers, who won the Sixth Man of Year Award as a Phoenix Sun, bounced around a little bit back here, kind of homecoming for him. This is the guy capable of putting some big numbers up for the Sixers, and they'll need him tonight. And that ends the eight-point run of uh, Phoenix, but the Suns turn it over. Allen Iverson leaves it for Iguodala. He didn't miss that time. Andre Iguodala, a high-flying rookie. Ego Dallow leads all NBA rookies in dunks a long way behind Shaq and Amari Stoudemire, but as you said, he loves to play in that rare air. Here goes Nash. It's Marion putting the Suns back in front. Marion has six. There's what you talked about. Joe Johnson defending Iverson. Kyle Korver. And Rogers brings the Sixers even. Stephen Hunter wheels in on Weber. And then Weber with a rebound. Iverson somehow got it across the lane. Iguodala on the dive cut to Korver. Nice play by Philadelphia. You know, that's two layups. That's two more layups than Kyle Corbett has seen in a month. So you know something good is going to happen for him tonight. Steve Nash missing from the outside and Corver the rebound. Over the top pass tipped away by Marion. Nash doesn't have numbers. Felt the bump, offered the shot. Neighborhood. <laughs> I had one, but it didn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Nash. You saw what he did his first time around with Phoenix and what he's doing right now. Well, tonight he's got a couple of turnovers, actually. But he drops those free throws. Remember, the first time around, he was playing against behind a great player in Kevin Johnson. Everybody forgets how great Kevin Johnson was and how difficult it was for Steve Nash to get into the game. And Jason Kidd. He played with that, played behind him also. Corver on the miss. And the ball belongs to Phoenix. Chris Weber with the 76ers. You know, got off to a rather uh, rocky start with Philadelphia. Had an injury problem. Missed a couple games. Marion. But I tell you what, he's a big reason why the 76ers have come to life here in the latter stages of the season. Well, what they've got to do is get Weber involved at the offensive end. You know, everyone talks about his defensive liabilities, but when he's scoring points, that neutralizes a lot of that, and he gets to get anything going as he works against Jake Bostel inside. There's two. So Weber in the scorebook for the first time. Now, when you have offensive players, and they have to... Re they have to be required to play a lot of defense. They're going to have a tendency to go to sleep on you at the defense again. Right. So you got to make sure that they give you something offensively. Otherwise, it's a minus, not a plus. The greatest offense-defense matchup in NBA is George Irvin. George Irvin would always get 20, but he always get 30, or he'd get 35, and he'd be a plus 15. Weber has four. All five starters have scored for the 76ers. Nash. Oh, Nash got that same bounce that Joe Johnson got earlier. Iverson on the miss. Here comes Nash as the Suns look to reclaim the lead. Jim Jackson in the game for Phoenix, number 21. Don't you want to do that? Don't you tell me, how does he do that? He lift his tongue all the time before he passes the ball. That's uh, three for Joe Johnson. Yeah, the guy is dribble, mount, dribble, mount. How did he do that? He tried to pick it. I knew a guy who stuck his tongue out was a pretty good player. Didn't you know that? Did, did you remember that guy? Yeah, but he never put his hand on it. He <laughs> talked about the hand on. This Weber, who was fouled on the play, and of course it was a homecoming for him on Monday night in this trip as uh, Weber and the 76ers went into Sacramento, and C. Webb got a great ovation from the fans at the Arco Arena. Well, they should have. I mean, you know, he did a tremendous thing for Sacramento, putting that team on the map, getting them to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, tremendous player for them.
And, uh, you know, if you want to look at the reality of the NBA, all great players get moved on. That foul on Weber, by the way, was on Jake Bostel. And there's another hit from deep. That's a two for Jim Jackson. If you play against the Phoenix Suns, you must be able to score. Iverson. Allen Iverson is able to score. Four points for AI. Sixers down by three. Number 10 is Barbosa in the game for Phoenix. Marion somehow stayed with it and comes back with a floater. You don't understand it. Oh, that is. <laughs> I make everybody think I've lost control of the ball, and then they relax, and then I get to knock it in. <laughs> he got the basket and the assist. <laughs> Coach, and they've got a big game coming up on Sunday on ABC, actually. The uh, 76ers go into Boston, and the way things look right now with Philadelphia within two games of the loss column from the Celtics, and that means the third seed as uh, the Atlantic winner would be the third seed in the East. It's amazing how this looks. Right. Allen Iverson on the free throw line will uh, take a look at the East standings. The 76ers are in eighth right now by two games in the loss column over Orlando. There are only two games in the loss column out of third after Boston uh, loses tonight. And they don't want to lose another ball game. You know, it's a three-game road trip. They win opener against the Lakers. They lose to Sacramento. They don't want to drop this game, but this is a tough opponent for them. Chances of getting out of here hold by Smith. Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson connecting. That's the Joe Johnson that was out here an hour ago. <laughs> Joe Johnson's got seven. And the Suns have their biggest lead at six. 140 for the quarter. Blocking foul called on Barbosa. Two fouls on Leandro. And uh, over the limit, that puts the 76ers on the free throw line. Iverson just split two free throws a moment ago. Uh, you see the rank of Allen Iverson, and you know how important he's been to the 76ers. And that's why I say, if their one and loss record is better, I mean, he he might be the leading candidate for MVP with the are, numbers he's putting up this year. You are always making a case for someone. That's my job. <laughs> His numbers aren't good enough this year, so we have to take him out of the equation. Aren't good enough? They aren't thirty points four, number one in the league in scoring. They aren't number good two in score. steals, five in assists. To the MVP, these aren't good enough. <laughs> His team is only one half. That's why I say if his team had a better one and loss record, we would be talking about him in MVP. But we gave him his MVP. He only gets one. You know? no, no. Yeah, yeah, he only gets one. Oh, Jackson called for the offensive foul. Mark Jackson has his first. Okay. Charles Barkley always had numbers, didn't he? He always had winning teams. Right. He but only... he didn't have a winning team a real winning team until he got here when they went to the finals and in they 93. gave him one and he got the mvp he got one right you got to be something unique and special to get more than one how about this sean merrick james Hughes. i would have never taken those people <laughs> you understand he did he out with the game <laughs> that's right Jim jackson's got four he came out in some all whites now he's got on some orange and white and he might not make another shot Mark Jackson in on Vosco. And a foul puts Mark Jackson on the line. Vosco has his second foul. Are they called the foul on Jim Jackson? First foul on Jim Jackson. Right now, the free throw line is keeping the 76ers in the game. Don't forget NBA TV, your all-access channel for everything basketball. Tune in every morning to NBA TV Daily at NBA TV Fantasy Hoops. I'm going to track the points for Sean Murray. All-white shoes versus white and orange. He had 10 in the all-whites. Now he's got on the others. And we'll find out whether his game rolls at the same rate. I thought it had to be uniform. Well, they are uniform. They're uniform. 
You can have all white or you can have your team colors. Joe Johnson has on the team colors, and Jim Jackson and Boswell had on those other shoes that uh, Marion had. Maybe they're hoping, maybe they borrowed his. And so they can get as hot as he was. Jackson with a pair of free throws. 76ers can take a foul here in the last 35 seconds. Barbosa on the miss and Iguodala the rebound. John Salmon. Here's the guy that they hope to have played better this season than John Salmon. Salmon is a, a versatile player, but he doesn't seem to play with the confidence that allows O'Brien to keep him out on the floor as he works for the last shot. With uh, six on the shot clock. 76ers unable to convert. And now Phoenix can have the final say. Jim Jackson. And the first quarter. Home made by his mom, which go past Buffalo. <laughs> Field goal percentage. Phoenix at 57. The uh, Sixers at 476. And points in the paint. Big edge there. Here's Salmon opening the second quarter, and Marion snaps down the rebound. Now the Suns in transition. That's the shoot. But Marion has definitely cooled off since he went to those sneakers. The, the Matrix is, is a unique player in that he plays a lot of different positions along that front line, but has the ability to push and make his own way. Mark Jackson against Hunter. Well, that's been the thing about Stoudemire and Marion this year is that both of them are undersized for the position that they play, but yet they're both having outstanding years. They've had tremendous seasons. And, you know, whatever Dan Tony sold them, they bought into. Uh, they've had the success. They believe in one another. You get out against the clock. Ooh, nice. And it counts for three. Iguodala with five points in the game. Sixers back to within two. We've played about a minute here in this second quarter. A capacity crowd in America West. The one thing that Barbosa has yet to be able to do is create for his teammates. Find them scoring opportunities. That one sailed out of bounds, and Jimmy Jackson gave me that strange look like I was here. That pass was in the front row. <laughs> what were you thinking? Salmon's trying to shake Barbosa now, uh, picked up by Marion as Rogers misses from the perimeter. Philadelphia doing a good job getting back. Of course, Nash is on the bench right now. Jackson missing on the three, and it's out of bounds to the 76ers. Steve Nash stretching it out on the side. Phoenix with a one-game lead on San Antonio, starting action tonight in the West. And then, of course, the Seattle Sonics who have now officially clinched a playoff spot four games out but on top of the northwest division well normally when you see a player laid out like nash you think there's something wrong with the bat i just take it a nap <laughs> what's with these guys chicken wings in the locker room nap in front of the bench and Rodney Rogers has come in and played well for uh, his team off the bench against his former team. That's six straight points for the 76ers as they pull even. But if you wanted to look at a preview and say, where do the uh, Suns have to be better? The guys off the bench have to play better. Hunter, Barbosa, Jackson all have to play with some force. Aaron McKay denied by Stephen Hunter. Barbosa. Richardson. Yep, and a foul. Foul on Rodney Rogers. The one thing that Stephen Hunter can do is block shots, and he makes a big hustle effort here to slap that one away, and then that gives Quentin Richardson a chance to go one on four. You see all of those black shirts back there, and they still got the score. Somebody's, somebody's getting two down. And have the lead. Richardson missed the free throw. Richardson with five points tonight. Has a three-point field goal. Allen Iverson in the game. His pass deflected. Putting Richardson ends up with it. Now Barbosa. Oh! 
Marion fouled going to the rim. Sean Marion on the line. TNT tomorrow night, doubleheader, the Cavaliers and the Bulls at 8 o'clock. That's a big game in the Central. Minnesota at the Lakers at 10.30. NBA TV Saturday, the Lakers at San Antonio at 8.30. ABC Sunday, the Sixers and Celtics from Boston at 1. Then either Dallas at Cleveland or Minnesota at Sacramento at 3.30. The Sixers are a good free throw shooting team. They have missed three in a row. Prior to uh, that one that uh, was knocked down by Marion. Here's Weber. And off the ball, offensive foul call. Tough it's call. on Rodgers. Tough call against Andre, uh, Rodney Rodgers because he had the inside position. And Barbosa just got hammered by his strength. He's trying to hook and hold, and he's too small. Hunter leaves it for Barbosa. Shot clock at 10. Richardson with six to shoot. Hunter underneath turns it over. And a timeout taken here. At the NBA season can do for recovery. They started 0-9. Everybody was laughing at the Chicago Bulls and Scouts Giles, and suddenly they started winning. And you know what people are saying in the East now? We don't want them as a first-round opponent. Washington is playing great, and Washington is fearful that they may have to see those Chicago Bulls. And they may have to see them as the visiting team. Should the Bulls pass the Wizards into that fourth spot? Dallenbear. Well, the one thing that the Sixers have been able to do tonight is stay in the paint. They've been throwing a lot of stuff inside, and uh, so they've got to work to keep that going in order to stay in this ball game. Jim Jackson over Weber. And the Suns control. First offensive rebound for Phoenix in the game. Hard to believe, isn't it? Walter McCarty on the miss. Walter McCarty, who came in from Boston, he is a streaky three-point shooter. And when he gets it going, that's another weapon for them as Iverson gets his first two of the second quarter. And that puts the 76ers on top. Philadelphia has led by as many as four. Nash runs into a crowd. Here's Jackson. And the foul puts Jim Jackson on the line. Tune in Friday night for an NBA doubleheader on ESPN. It starts at 7.30 Eastern with a Kia NBA shoot-around. Then at 8 o'clock Eastern, Sacramento takes on LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Kings and the Cavs also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. D'Alembert called for that foul. That's his third. Jim Jackson makes the first of two. A tough evening for D'Alembert. He can't get any rhythm because of the foul situation. He just scored inside. Takes that long stroll to the sideline. Uh, you know, he is a shot blocking uh, activity type of center, but he's not been able to get any blocks tonight sitting on the bench. How about Jim Jackson? Has he not lived up to that hired gun reputation yet again? I mean, it seems like every year he ends up on a pretty good team and plays a big role in that team. You know, ever since he broke his first deal in the NBA when he came into Dallas, he had the nickname of Wall Street Jimmy. And there'll be a lot of guys on Wall Street that need to take some lessons from Jim Johnson on how to work a deal and how to make it work in your favor. Look at Steve Nash working his way inside. Oh, he set up Hunter, but he couldn't handle the pass. And now Jackson back to the free throw line for Phoenix. Here's Jim Jackson. And foul is on Weber. That's number one on Weber. If you're in Houston and you're Jimmy Jackson and you get traded to New Orleans, who at the time had maybe won four games, you know what he's saying? I've been around too long to take this. I'm just going to wait. So he took the fines, and eventually <laughs> it opened up for him, and he came here. I am just going to wait. Jackson knows how to play. I mean, I think he had his best season in Dallas where he was a complete player before he hurt his ankle. Yes, he Once did. he had the ankle injury, he was never the same player, but he's a smart player. And uh, if you put him with the right combination of people, you're always going to get something from Jackson. 
Allen Iverson on the miss. The uh, Philadelphia 76ers have 14 fouls in the second quarter. The Suns with none. And Nash gets all the way to the rim. Weber. Here comes Richardson. Nash on a burst around Iverson. Past Weber. And then a pitch out to Richardson for three. Have you about the fact he's being tied? He ought to pull out the Calvin Murphy trick and get that voodoo doll. Start <laughs> sticking pins in it and see if it works. Dan Marley working the game over there for the Suns television with Gary Bender. Now it is Chris Weber rolling in on Hunter. C. Webb ends that nine-point run by Phoenix. One thing that Philadelphia's been able to do tonight is get high percentage stuff, so they got to work to keep the Suns under control offensively. Steve Nash work inside with their big people or off the penetration of Allen Iverson. Eight points for Nash after that hit. Iverson guarded by Joe Johnson. What you can't do as an offensive team is get impatient against me. Things will make you pay for every deep, quick miss that you take. Nash kicks it outside to Richardson for three. And now Quentin Richardson has the Phoenix record. Gone. <laughs> And the Suns with an 11 point lead, the biggest lead of the game. A little over five and a half left in the half. Nothing doing for Iverson. McCarty the rebound. Richardson always looks for Nash and then he runs to his spot knowing there's a good chance he's going to get a return entry pass. Iverson on the wraparound. Allen Iverson picking up the personal foul. And over the limit are the Philadelphia 76ers, so Quentin Richardson to the free throw line. Richardson this year has been an outstanding three-point shooter, came in shooting 36% from three and just under 40% overall. You know, and I think that his, his uh, field goal percentage would be higher, but he's been more of an exclusive. <laughs> Marley <laughs> wipes his record away if he were to get chances to go inside more. But for San Marion and Stoudemire, who play better closer at the rim, they leave Richardson out on the rim. Richardson with 13 points in the game, 10 in the quarter, including two three-point field goals, which has given him the Suns record for the most threes in the season. Weber. And Weber has eight. Joe Johnson guarded by Aaron McKee. Richardson takes up slack this time and sets up Joe Johnson. Here comes A.I. A three on two deal. Broken up and stolen by Johnson. Richardson again. Four threes for Richardson in the half. In the quarter. Three in the quarter. <laughs> he has gone three crazy and uh, they have exploded. Remember when the game was 33 32 Philadelphia? That's right. And this is the danger of playing against the Phoenix Suns. You have to keep scoring points. And if you don't, they do. And there's two more for Nash. And that means since it was 33 32, it is 21 to 4. And they're coming to their feet at America West as Jim O'Brien. The Philadelphia 76ers, three in the quarter, 13 in the quarter. So my question to you, Snapper, is do the 76ers have enough offensive firepower of their own to keep pace in a game like this? No. A short answer. They're going to have to find a way to slow down Phoenix. They're going to have to come up with... Uh, 
you know the defense that gets them back into the game well you have to do it too in a, in a two-pronged way you've got to control the tempo of the game and you've got to have great shot selection you've got to try to stay inside Weber trying to do that Bobby 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 wanted to foul otherwise you get the Phoenix Suns who come at you very quickly in transition they're a team that scores over the top they like to get you spread out then it's difficult to control them Cardi out of the ball game John Marion back in. Three forty left in the half. Every team in the NBA faces this problem against Phoenix. They lead the league, 110 points a game. Joe Johnson puts two more on the board. Joe Johnson with a nine-point game working. Now it's an 18-point lead for the Suns. Here's a steal by Richardson. Couldn't quite control the dribble on the sideline. And these are the areas where Phoenix is good. In the passing lane, they deflect balls, they get to a lot of balls. A lot of people say they don't play good defense, but they play good passing lane defense. And when they're on the ball and they're reacting to it, they're going to have greater success. Iverson finally pulled the trigger. That's four in the quarter for him. Allen Iverson with 11 in the half. Steve Nash gets through and finds Marion and the foul. Timeout and the Suns are blowing them out. Everyone wants to get in the car. How big are those Ramblers anyway? They were pretty big in their day. All the cars were big. <laughs> <laughs> Gas was only what? 10 cents a gallon. <laughs> So Marion completes the three-point play. As you would pose the question, Jen, my friend, how old are you really if it was 10 cents a gallon? Sorry. <laughs> People have to do the math. Iverson controlled by Rogers, an open look for Weber. And the Suns keep pouring it on. I mean, again, when you look at the scoreboard, you realize that just in a short period of time, how many points the Phoenix Suns have put on the board. Marion Keith, that was deflected. And it's rebounded by Aaron McKee. Here, if you're the 76ers, what you've got to do is build some sort of offensive rhythm. You also have to know that you're going to get a chance to score against them, and you've got to work to score. Weber goes down. Weber went down after that contact as he spun to the hoop. Oh, he's trying to work out the pain of this one. And so it's, it may be more of a tweak. Weber on the free throw line, an 80% shooter from the line this season. Nine points for C. Webb. The 76ers are 9 and 8 since acquiring Weber, but remember he missed a couple of games, so they're 9 and 6 in games in which Weber has played. A healthy Weber playing at his very best against this explosive Phoenix team would have to be, along with Iverson, both 30 point scores in order for him to have a chance to get the win. So they got a lot of work to do. Inside of two minutes and a half, Nash against Iverson. Nash got around Rogers and rebounds his own miss and sets up the three for Joe Jackson. That's a bad straight off. You miss a two and you end up giving a three. And in the morning workout, what uh, Jim O'Brien told his team was, guys, we got to control the dribble. We can't let Nash get inside and break us down. He got by two people and ended up in a three-point field goal. So, and guess what? He's got eight rebounds, seven assists. He's on his way to a triple-double, perhaps. Although, Phoenix is up so big that if this continues, he may not get the minutes to get his triple-double tonight. Well, or it may come within the next minute, 22 seconds, and he will already have it. It may take the rest of the night off. <laughs> but I say to you, my friend. Yes. They coaches, me. Well, they, they have these morning workouts. They go through all of these things. What happens between 11 o'clock and, and 8 o'clock starts? I guess they forgot, or maybe they just didn't have it in them to start with. <laughs> Nash went around the Vosco pick, and Vosco is the one that put a body on Nash. And the foul is called on Rodney Rogers, and 
Allen Iverson was upset on that uh, screen that was set by Vosco. Rodgers with his third. Rodgers, who had a good game working, is now in the same place that Delamberry is in foul trouble. They're going to have to take him out of the ball game. Nash, one of the league's better free throwers at the line. Eighth in the league, about 89%. He's three for three tonight. Nash leads the league in assists. So Weber out, Jackson in, Josh Davis in. You know, we were talking about Steve Nash working on a triple-double tonight. The snapper may be right. He may get it before the half is over. Weber is going into the locker room, get a little early medical attention over the last minute, so he's going to go in. They're going to try to make sure he's all right. But the 76ers are down 22 points. Less than a minute for the half. And four six uh, sons, rather, are in double figures already. Marion collects the rebound. Nash finds Joe Johnson. Bosco had a hand on it. Nash saves to Bosco. Underneath Joe Johnson. A 24 point lead for Phoenix. And Kim O'Brien. Uh, had his team playing back-to-back. -back. Felt they were tired and they needed the day off. Maybe they should have just gone home. Nash is two assists shy of a triple-double. Because they have not been able to keep pace at either end of the floor as Nash looks deep. Wait a minute. He may get an assist here. <laughs> what a half for Steve Nash.